One of the many powerful features of Revit is the ability to fine tune an element's position once you've put it into your 3D model. To do so we have a feature called temporary dimensions. So as an example I've got a very simple building here. I've just roughly put the external walls in, a few internal walls and some doors. So let's say we want to really start fine tuning the position of these elements. If I click on this door for example, and select it, you'll immediately see that two dimensions pop up on screen. These are shown in blue by default and they're called temporary dimensions and their purpose is to show how this element relates to its neighbour. In this case the external wall on the one side and this on internal wall on the other. And What makes these really powerful is that I can just click on the value and if I know that that door needs to be two meters away from this, ex this internal wall I can simply type two meters hit the enter key and the door moves accordingly conversely if I had a fixed distance from the external wall to the start of the door there I could just click in there and again put the value in, hit return, and the door moves. So let's do it with another element. So this piece of wall here, select the temporary dimensions come up and they show us how this piece of wall, this selected element, relates to its neighbors, i.e. this external wall here and the outer face of that external wall. Again, just click in the value enter a new value, hit return and the wall would move accordingly. Now if the temporary dimension is not referencing where you need it to be, so let's say in, in this example we know the distance we want between the face of that internal wall and the external face of that wall, what we can do is re-reference the temporary dimensions so I'll just take you through that step by step. Remember, select the element first. That brings up the temporary dimensions. Just before we go any further, just it's worth noting that these only ever appear when an element is selected. As soon as you deselect, the temporary dimensions disappear. Let's bring those back. So let's re-reference this temporary dimension. And to do so, all you need to do is hover very carefully with your cursor over the little blue grip. Just move my cursor away for a second so you can see that blue grip. If I go over it, click and hold my left mouse button, and you can see Revit is offering me various positions to re-reference. So if I let go there on the external wall, oh, let's do that again and let go. You can now see that that temporary dimension measures to the external wall and now I can click in the value and say for example I want that to be six meters away and the wall moves accordingly. Temporary dimensions work on every type of element in Revit so all you need to do say is click on the element brings up the temporary dimensions, click in their value, change it, hit the enter key and the element will move. Remember you can change where those reference to just by picking up the little control grip and letting it snap to another reference. The only other thing to mention about temporary dimensions is that little icon the other side of the value that is an icon to represent a dimension line. If you click on that, it converts the temporary dimension to a permanent dimension. So I click that there. And a permanent dimension is one that remains in place in this view. Later on in the course, I'll be covering dimensions in detail in a dedicated unit. But just to show you that you can convert temporary dimensions to permanent ones. You can still use these as temporary dimensions if you select the object. So let's select that door again. 
Notice when I do so, the value changes to blue in color to show you it's a temporary dimension now. And again, I can click on that, put a new value in, hit return. The door moves accordingly. Deselect the element and it goes back to a permanent dimension. As we've just seen, temporary dimensions are really powerful in helping us fine tune elements once they're in our model. But what about when we're placing elements in to start with? We've got a feature in Revit called alignment lines to help us align new elements to existing ones already in the model. I'll show you how that works now. So let's add some more walls into this simple model. So hit the wall command. Now let's say I want a vertical wall from here that lines up with this wall and then comes up and goes across to that wall. So as I hover over this wall for the start point, notice the light blue dashed line. That's an alignment line. And you'll see various alignment lines keep flashing up as I move my cursor around. So basically I am going to choose a start point for my wall, but Revit is offering me various start points that relate to existing elements in the model. So let's line up with that wall. Go up here. Now again, if I need it to align with that wall across there, you can see as I move up carefully, it will find that. And I could come across and select. Alignment lines work on all sorts of elements in Revit. So another example, if I add a model line in, cancel that auto reminder. Again, you can see Revit is finding those common references. And slide them out there. Just do that once more with another section of wall. So again, I want a wall to come up here in line with that and then go across and back down in line with that short piece of wall there. So hover over the light blue dashed alignment line. It shows me I'm aligned with that wall above. I'm now aligned with the wall to the left and come across come down and join up to the external wall. If you're coming to Revit from AutoCAD or virtually any other CAD system, you'll be used to snaps or object snaps. Revit is no different. It's got a full snap system. So for example, if we create a new piece of wall and we want the wall to start midway along this wall. If I hover over, get the little triangle for midpoint. So all the object snaps have icons which are shown as purple symbols. So there is the midpoint that wall's going to spring from. Cancel that there. If I select a model line, find some other snaps just as examples. So it will find endpoints, midpoints, tangents, all the basic snaps that you'd find in any other CAD system. By default, snaps are turned on. You can override those snaps. So if you don't want it to find a certain snap point or only find a certain snap point, you can do so. Again, if I select wall and before I search for snap, if I right click, I've got snap overrides so I can tell it to find a particular snap. Just going to cancel out of that for now. And to find the general snap settings in Revit, you need to go to manage. And then in the first panel settings there, 
there is a control panel specifically for snaps. Here you can turn the snaps off, you can set the angular dimension for the increments for the snaps, and you can set the defaults for which snap points you'd like Revit to find. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.